coming up. It kind of felt right and it kind of felt wrong. Solve my internal dilemma. It's there if needed. And not many people, I suspect, can say that. Big bad boss woman. Terribly butch. <laughs> oh my God, you'll never guess. I definitely wasn't going to do that. In a world where this sort of thing still happens. Not what they wanted. Bugger. Really? Next time. Oh, that didn't come across at all. No. And now, enjoy the podcast. How do you say that? How do you say that? How do you say that? How, How do, do you, you say, say that? that? Hello and welcome to today's episode of How Do You Say That? Sponsored by BritishVoiceOver.co.uk The podcast for voiceovers, podcasters and anyone else who reads scripts out loud Proving that there isn't just one way to read a script But a multitude of different ways so let me introduce my co-host, Mark Rice. Hello there. Now, hello. <laughs> now, today's fun fact about Mark is that he absolutely loves the south of France. Oh, I do. The area around Saint-Tropez. Mm. It's beautiful, isn't it? It really, it really is. Sadly, I'm not going to get to go on holiday there this uh, year, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately. No. Uh, my co-host is Sam Boffin, who, in a south of France-related fact, well, Monaco, in fact, performed on stage in front of Prince Albert but the current ruler of Monaco and Grace Kelly's son in 2017. And I understand you chit-chatted afterwards. I did chit-chat with him afterwards, <laughs> I did. And I spent most of the play ironing in a pair of pants. <laughs> And that's how, <laughs> yes, it was slightly embarrassing. I then, then kind of chatted to him on the steps afterwards and uh, of the, of the theatre and thought to myself, oh, God, you know, he's seen me tap dancing in a pair of pants. And not many people, I suspect, can say that. Not many people can say that, unless, of course, they were watching that particular play <laughs> at that particular time. And, of course, we also have a special guest who this week is Anthony Hewson. Hello, Anthony. Hi, Anthony. Uh, hello, Sam. Hello, Mark. How are hello. we? Mm, not bad, very not good. bad. Now, before we actually, are you an ant or an Anthony? I am either or. Mm. OK. Uh, well, here's a bit about Anthony. Anthony's a voiceover artist based in Cambridgeshire who balanced carrying out occasional voiceovers with his other main freelance work for a long time, copywriting and copy editing, until finally relinquishing his last major writing client earlier on this year. Ray. <laughs> Not Ray. No, sorry. I miss you dearly. No, 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 it's terrible. They, sorry, sorry. Yes, of course. Now, he has been nominated for 14 voiceover awards since 2018. Well done. And his past Not a clients. <laughs> Not a sausage. I wasn't going to mention that. We had a whole thing going on, didn't we? <laughs> Uh, amusingly, Anthony wrote that in his biog, and I took it out because we didn't want to actually mention. That. But yeah, you I brought it up. Valid. You brought it up, no, Anthony. It's, it's fine. An, it's an important point. I think it's an important point. Always the bloody bridesmaid, though, mate. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. I disappointing. Know, I know. Next time. Um, next yes, time. Next yeah. time. I've said that enough times, Mark. I think what I'll say is <laughs> never. So it doesn't matter about his uh, voiceover awards because his past clients include DHL, HSBC, English Heritage. Jaguar Land Rover, Toomey McLaren, and Bulga Bulgari? Bulgari? Bul yeah, they're quite big names, aren't they? It's yeah, Bulgari. Yeah, but I can't, I can't say them. Bulgari. Bulgari. There you Bulgari. Go. See, I thought being ignorant of all things jewel and expensive um, watch related previously, yeah. I assumed it was Bulgari. It sounded sort of yeah. Bulgari. Mm, I did. Whereas Bulgari sounds kind of vulgary. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, so I was, I was very surprised. Yeah. But it's an enviable client list, to be fair. Yes. Mm. Anyway, do you have a fun fact that you can share? Oh, yes. I, yeah, I've got, well, <laughs> several, well, fun is probably overstating it desperately. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll just go with one of the most embarrassing. Yes. Oh, oh yes, yes, please. Good, an embarrassing yes, fact. Good, we like that. You mentioned that I was a, a copywriter previously, um, and I was a copywriter for years, and for a couple of years in the early days, I had Weight Watchers as one of my clients. Ah. Um, and I, I worked on all their internal comms editing. They had newsletters that went out to all of their leaders around the UK. The head of the communications department there, who was kind of above my contact, decided to do a day's copywriting training and engaged one of the country's top copywriters, a lovely guy called Andy Maslin, um, to come along and deliver this day's training. And the bonus was that I got to attend as well. Andy and I were the only men in the entire gathering, <laughs> and I suppose there must have been 30 or 40 people there, maybe okay. 50. I mean, it, it was a lot. Um, and in one of the practical exercises that Andy had 
created. We were split into small groups and had to write some advertising copy for something or other. Not Weight Watchers specifically, but something. Um, and then someone had to read out that ad copy to the entire group. <laughs> And someone suggested that I read ours because of my voice. So yeah. um, I did, feeling terribly self-conscious and probably <laughs> already blushing. And the head of comms said, and she was standing up at the front of the room, said some gushing praise that concluded with, what a fantastic voice you'd have for radio. And I, <gasps> I was still blushing at this when someone piped up with a fantastic face for radio too. Oh. And everyone in the room erupts into (laughs) laughter. This room of dozens of women. And Andy, who stood up at the front, and he sort of looked at me sympathetically, as did the head of comms. But I don't think I've ever heard anything so loud as 40 women laughing at my face, apparently. It's obviously scarring, so let's move on rapidly. Let's have a look at the first (laughs) script of the show, shall we? And ask, how do you say that? How do you say that? Now, this is something that I've been working on this week. Ah, excellent. Uh, the client will never listen to this. So it was a puff piece, basically. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's you know, one of those kind of corporates that is basically blowing the trumpet of... Blowing their know, own trumpet. Yeah, I, I think, well, we've all, yeah, we, we've all come across in a kind of we? Yeah, it's a kind of meant to be an inspirational uh, okay. one. And um, I have to confess that although they did want my voice... It took me a fair few goes to get it oh, right for them. Because they wanted worrying. something strange? Well, to me, they wanted something strange. I mean, uh, to me, they wanted something really quite over the top for me. Oh. As in proud? Yeah, well, they wanted kind of big bad boss woman. Oh, and my uh. instinct was to <laughs> have something far more connected Yes. And and do something because actually the words are, I mean, the words are the kind of t- typical puff piece yeah. type inspirational mm-hmm. load of old nonsense, really. But um, but having said that, um, you know, it, it, I, I, I knew that I could make it into something that felt really sort of connected and, and real, despite the um, overblown words. So are you saying they came back to you and said, we don't want it real? We, we, well, we want they didn't it say overblown. we don't want it real. What they wanted was, uh, I felt, slightly old-fashioned. And I I resisted and <laughs> resisted. And resi- I oh really did resist it because it's actually really difficult to do that kind of thing, I, I, I find. But so it took me three three attempts, I think. On, on the third one, they went, okay. that's what it is. And I... It was one of those ones where you go downstairs afterwards and go, oh, my God, you'll never guess what they asked me to do. I love jobs like that. Yeah. Well, yes. But it it really was an effort to drag out of me what they wanted. Shall I have a go and see if I can solve the internal dilemma? Solve my internal dilemma? (laughs) Let's have a go. Let's have a go. Big journeys need great navigators. For over 15 years, we've been at the top, providing strategic counsel to hundreds of clients. But staying at the top requires change. Sometimes change is incremental. Sometimes it's profound. Our combination of expertise, insight and creative edge allows us to navigate the road ahead for our clients. Uniting brilliant minds to redefine communications, shaping campaigns that captivate audiences and create impact for our clients. Wow. Yes. That last sentence didn't really scan terribly well, but yes, I, you get the it's impression. It's not well written. And <laughs> but... how, yeah, go ahead. How <laughs> did you feel? Now, had I, would you have done it in that way? Had I not given you all that previous? Probably not. And I got about halfway mm. and thought, hmm, I had a bit of a crisis of confidence that sometimes <laughs> it's profound. It's like, uh, oh, okay, I get, yeah, I see what you mean. I left that line in because it was one of my faves. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I can see where your internal dilemma came from now. Yes. But at so, the same time, Mark, you're really good at that sort of thing. And yeah, I think that if is. with the with the right music behind it. Yes, you're yes, right. You're right. Yes. Anne. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Absolutely. Could carry and work in it. You can see it in a, in a kind of conference situation, internal conference and, and sort of cheer them all up and, and then, yes. you know, break the bad news about something else. I do quite a lot of these for different companies. And it's normally kind <laughs> of end of year conference thing that every, all their big 
kind of salespeople are at and it plays at the beginning doesn't it um, yeah, so yeah. it is often big and overblown so I know, I know kind of where it's coming from yeah and i don't get many of those you know i seem to get the more um p- personal ones if you like mm. and mm. let's move on to you well I, I, should i just do it as i would have approached yes it? yeah do it yeah. how you would have done without yeah, all because i suspect that's going to be more in line with what sam was originally yeah. thinking okay and i yeah. when i read this i assumed it would be a like a brand thing that was external yeah. um but i yeah. don't think that makes a great deal of difference to how i'd have approached it if you weren't equipped with music if you didn't have any real direction go on then anthony whenever you're ready big journeys need great navigators for over 15 years we've been at the top providing strategic counsel to hundreds of clients but staying at the top requires change sometimes change is incremental sometimes it's profound Our combination of expertise, insight and creative edge allows us to navigate the road ahead for our clients. Uniting brilliant minds to redefine communications, shaping campaigns that captivate audiences and create impact for our clients. Yeah. Yeah, you went softer than I thought you were going to go there. It really worked, I thought. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a, it gives it a very different feel. Yes, it does. <laughs> now I'll play you the music. <laughs> no, I'll let... Uh, uh, it, it, it gives it a really different... Yeah, I, I mean, you know, yes, that was probably more along the lines of where I kind of started. I was interested because the first five sentences, so down to profound, you kind of went on a slight upbeat to finish the sentence and that really changed the the motion of it, I thought. That was really nice. Thank you. I just feel with some of these things, I mean, my natural voice I, is quite gentle. It's I'm not a loud person. So it's much easier for me to do that soft yeah. read. And that's instinctively where I sit with stuff. And perhaps that's because that's also what I personally respond to most. So that's that unless yes, the direction yeah. is very clearly something else, that tends to be a starting point, the cold mm. read kind of space. And yet you've got quite a lot of welly in your voice, yep. I always think. I it's think there got... if needed. Exactly. Oh, he does have the butch energy. Oh, yeah. Butch oh, yeah. energy. <laughs> Terribly butch. <laughs> Which, as you know, I tend to bring to most of my scripts. Oh, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's always Never there. Never doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fascinated, Sam, to see what you actually did with it well, now. Well, do you know, I'm now I, I'm, I'm sort of thinking, can I bring myself to do it without the music in my ears? Well, let's... <laughs> can you recreate it? Yeah. Exactly. Can I recreate that moment? <clears throat> right, OK, let's give it a go. Big journeys need great navigators. For over 15 years, we've been at the top, providing strategic counsel to hundreds of clients. But staying at the top requires change. Sometimes change is incremental. Sometimes it's profound. Our combination of expertise, insight and creative edge allows us to navigate the road ahead for our clients uniting brilliant minds to redefine communications, shaping campaigns that captivate audiences and create impact for our clients. See, one word, proud. It's proud. And I fully yes. understand why you wouldn't have wanted to approach that like that in the beginning. Absolutely. I get that entirely. Even now, I, I think... <laughs> I fully understand why a client would ask for that. You said very old fashioned. You're right. That is an old fashioned way of looking at it. Yes. No, you're right. You're right. But there are an awful lot of companies that still ask for that. Yeah. And it was big old music. But I don't know, though, Sam. I I think with big old music, that would be gentle almost. Yeah. Maybe I didn't do it as much as that. Maybe if I look back. Yeah, and, and, I, and I look at it, maybe I still wasn't going hard as hard as I did in the end. Because your internal self is saying no. Did they give you a final copy? Uh, not yet. No, it's that, it's that new, actually. I, I imagine they're still mixing. Because I'm wondering if they're going to reverb it. Oh, my as God. Well, because, because that would make it even bigger, wouldn't it, against the music? Let, let us see. Oh, when oh, you oh, get oh, it, can you please you, play on a future episode? <laughs> yes, can you imagine? And this is it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's worthwhile remembering that these are real scripts that we've been working on, as Sam has been saying, but we have changed some names and some details to avoid copyright issues. How do you say that? Ant, what have you bought hmm. us today? Well, I've brought you something which actually doesn't have any details changed. It is edited for length, uh-huh. but it is not. I've not, I've not changed anything else. I did, of course, get permission first. Good. Thank you. This is a series of um, voiceovers that I'm in the middle of. 
uh, just I suppose just just crossed halfway point, mm-hmm. and it's from a South American based software development company that puts together tech teams for North American clients, and I know them only because I interviewed one of their staff members when they worked at a different company that I was writing for. Oh, wow. oh, do you know what? That's the best kind of client referral to get, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, he'd connected with me on LinkedIn after that interview, which must have been three, four years ago. And then I got this message out of the blue around Christmas time saying, could we could we have a bit of a <laughs> chat about um, doing some voiceovers for us? Um, and they came up with this idea. And, and so these these are essentially biographies for each of their 20-odd members of staff. Oh, I see. Ah. I gave them a sample of this script in English and in general American because what they wanted it delivered in was a kind of trailer voice. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That didn't changes see that coming. it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that coming, no. It does, doesn't it? Um, I, I, I thought about not telling you that just to see what you'd do. Uh, I, mean, and I you definitely wasn't asking... going to do that. <laughs> Yeah, and nor would I, obviously, without that information. Right. So it's not a million miles away from where I was, interestingly. <laughs> You're right. Wow. You will see, yeah, yeah. Oh um, so it's obviously, it's entirely up to you whether you go down that route, how you approach it. If you've got the context, you can make that choice. Yeah. Wow, OK. Interesting. OK. Can I ask a pronunciation? Is it Garagoa? It is. Thank you. Sam, I was going to ask exactly the same question. Okay. We're, we're, we're of two minds in this, aren't we? <laughs> I'd like to we pretend are. I already knew, but no, I looked it up as well. Are you going to go first, Sam, on this one? I can go first. I probably won't do a trailer voice. Oh, go on. Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> I, well, no. No. I won't be bullied into the trailer voice. I'm going to do my South Devon act. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just, <laughs> oh, that would be brilliant as well. <laughs> that would be good. But I'm not going to. Okay, so. Okay. Imagination is priceless. It didn't matter if there was no money to buy a ball. He'd make one out of socks and paper. He was born and raised in the heights of Garagoa, in the heart of Colombia. Money was scarce, but love was abundant, and he was a happy child. He got his first job when he was eight, helping his old man with his small business. It was fun times with his dad, and somehow he could tell he was forging his character and getting ready for the future. College was hard, but it was worth it. He got a dream job that let him travel the world and become an expert in data engineering. When he makes a suggestion, we always listen. When we say yes, he will implement faster than anyone. He is a part of Exceed, and we try to keep him as close as possible. Very nice. Nice documentary style read not, there, Sam. Not what they wanted. <laughs> not what they wanted, but... but <laughs> she defies the brief. I think it's interesting oh, because actually if a client hears that and they hadn't thought documentary style, I think you would probably win them over with that. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah, it depends. Well, I, no, I, I agree with Mark because actually that was really engaging and, I, and, and I'm... I'm now hating myself slightly because if I <laughs> if I read that in a straight normal way I would think oh I'm boring the crap out of everyone and <laughs> right. yet you didn't and we were still listening and wanting more so yeah but, all right show off but this isn't what but this is exactly <laughs> what what uh, happened with the last one with me they had to pull me towards what they wanted with these yeah. kind of baby steps <laughs> me going no don't make me do it like that <laughs> so and you said that the brief was promo trailer how what was the actual wording they used it was either movie trailer voice or possibly even and i think it must have included this phrase i don't know why else it would pop into my head superhero oh, trailer oh gosh bloody so, hell i definitely yeah. didn't nail that did i you didn't aim for that sam you didn't aim wimpy hero <laughs> compassionate hero <laughs> I'm going to try compassionate hero trailer movie style yeah, wow. then if that is go, if that's go, go. an actual thing oh gosh here we go it may be now Imagination is priceless. It didn't matter if there was no money to buy a ball. He would make one out of socks and paper. He was... <laughs> don't make me laugh. He was born and raised in the heights of Garagoa, in the heart of Colombia. Money was scarce, but love was abundant, and he was a happy child. He got his first job when he was eight, helping his old man with his small business. 
It was fun times with his dad, and somehow he could tell he was forging his character, getting ready for the future. College was hard, but it was worth it. He got a dream job that let him travel the world and become an expert in data engineering. When he makes a suggestion, we always listen. When we say yes, he will implement faster than anyone. He is a part of Exceed, and we try to keep him as close as possible. And tonight, <laughs> just for you, here he is. Oh, that did feel, that wow. did feel kind of wrong. It kind of wow. felt right and it kind of felt wrong. You know what? That's not dissimilar to so when I Like I said, I provide them with a British version and then an American version, and that's not dissimilar, I don't think, to the British version I gave them. Gosh. <laughs> well, I mean, hats off to you both then. It's an unusual thing to ask for, wow, yeah. Wow, yeah. yeah. But, you know, the client's the client. You client's know. client. Yes. If they're paying the bills, they can have it whichever hell the way they want. Do you know exactly. which one they chose, Ant? Uh, yeah. Oh, good. And you're going to give us the one they chose? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just going to try to turn my vo- my mouth into American mouth for a moment, Ooh, which, which always takes a moment, doesn't it? Well, I'm interested to see how you get into that, so yes. Okay. Imagination is priceless. It didn't matter if there was no money to buy a ball. He would make one out of socks and paper. He was born and raised in the heights of Garagoa in the heart of Colombia. Money was scarce, but love was abundant and he was a happy child. He got his first job when he was eight, helping his old man with his small business. It was fun times with his dad, and somehow he could tell he was forging his character and getting ready for the future. College was hard, but it was worth it. He got a dream job that let him travel the world and become an expert in data engineering. When he makes a suggestion, we always listen. When we say yes, he will implement faster than anyone. He is a part of Exceed, and we try to keep him as close as possible. Wow. I don't know what I was expecting, but that was amazing. Wow. <laughs> that, was really, that was really good. That, 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 that trailer movie voice is, well, let, let's park that. The trailer movie voice is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, what an extraordinary script to use it on. Totally. I know. Can you, do, can you do us a quick, in a world? In a world... Oh God! He's in a world there. where this sort of thing still happens. <laughs> <laughs> if we had had that script in any other episode, I would have said that that was a wild card read for it. Yes, yeah. yes. But not in this <laughs> Sorry, episode. Sorry, I really shouted that tonight. <laughs> yes, the wild card read. But I wonder also when we get to wild card if that means that we're going to go the other way on it. <laughs> and on that crazy note, <laughs> dun dun dun. <laughs> I think this is the moment we love. It's the wild card bit. Yes. Yeah. How do you say that? Yes. Let's see if we can ring some changes with these ah, scripts. Yes. So, Ant, can you pick? Mm. Can you pick one of the scripts for Mark? <laughs> yes, and I think that's a really good idea, Sam. And the reason I say it's a really good idea is because. I was really tempted to give you in the style of Arnold Schwarzenegger because <laughs> last week you signed, you, you signed off an email with I'll be back. Um, oh, so I was really tempted. But then I thought you've had a whole bunch of wild cards that would terrify me to my core. Uh, so I have thought I, I, would, I get the worst. I get the worst you wild do cards. Get the yes, worst. you do. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Um, and I, and, and I, I'm, I'm obviously not going to give Mark Arnold Schwarzenegger either because I think right. it's, it's limiting. It is a bit. It is a bit, but also because because of Mark's butch energy and <laughs> and love of innuendo, <laughs> love I I've, I had a dilemma between in the style oh. of Jeeves and Worcester, oh, oh. which I love, yes, um, love a bit of Woodhouse, or going Leslie Phillips, Terry <laughs> Thomas kind of vibe. Oh my God, you're. You're playing to string dog. Mm, Not that I do. I say. I say. <laughs> so I'm. Mm, which would so, you like? I think, I think there's there's plenty of room for innuendo in script one. Um, so I'm going to give you Leslie Phillips or Terry Thomas, your choice for script one, Mark. Okay, right. <laughs> Good Lord, <laughs> heavens above! Uh, ding dong! Big journeys need great navigators, and for over fifteen years, 
We've been at the top, providing strategic counsel to hundreds of clients. But staying at the top requires change. Sometimes change is incremental, and sometimes it's profound. Our style of expertise, insight, and creative edge allows us to navigate the road ahead for our clients, uniting brilliant minds to redefine communications, shaping campaigns that captivate audiences, and create impact for our clients. <laughs> Ding dong, <laughs> ding dong, <laughs> lovely. Yes, the, the, I can feel the innuendo feel seeping that? out of me. A, a little, a little uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, that didn't come across at all. Oh, that's no. all right then. No, not. not. <laughs> yes, but it was. It, it it definitely was a very different way of doing it. Let's let's put it out. It's definitely not that. written for that style. That's no. for sure. That no. is for sure. Gosh. Well, okay. Next one suggested by Sam for ants. What do you、oh, reckon,、crap. Sam? Ants. I would like you to do.、Mm-hmm. I'd like you to do your script. Yeah. But as a gossipy neighbour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Okay. Imagination's priceless, isn't it? It didn't matter if there was no money to buy a ball. He'd make one out of socks and paper. He was born and raised in the heights of Garagoa, apparently in the heart of Colombia. Money was scarce, blowed it down the bookies, but love was abundant, and he was a happy child. Things have changed now. He got his first job when he was eight, helping his old man with his small business. Bit dodgy, stuff under the counter, you know the sort of thing. So it was fun times with his dad, and somehow he could tell he was forging his character, forging is the operative word, I think, <laughs> and getting ready for the future. Wow. So. They went to college. College was hard, but it was worth it. And he got this dream job that let him travel the world and、oh. become an expert in data engineering, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> so when he makes a suggestion, we always listen, just in case there's something juicy we can pass on. <laughs> and when we say yes, he will implement faster than anyone. Now I don't know、Ooh. what implement is, but it sounds、Ooh. a bit iffy, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. He is a part of Exceed. We try to keep him as close as possible because、oh, you, yeah. you can't trust him. You can't trust him. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Love beautifully gossipy. Very nice. Beautifully <laughs> thank gossipy. Thank you. Thank you. Use practice. I think I think Sam also、uh, aided a little bit at the beginning there with、uh, with her encouragement of the gossip there. <laughs> well, I、yes. think when you're doing those sort of things, you've got to really kind of imagine somebody's actually yeah. replying, yeah. haven't you? I, I agree. Oh, right. Oh, I said very much so. Did、uh, what? Did you do any visualization? There's a visual for everyone.、Um, <laughs> I sort, of, <laughs> I sort of put one hand on my hip, yeah, and and sort of thrust my bottom out a bit. Wow,、sort of, you know, a bit of a bit of finger pointy gossipy sort I of. I can you see,、know. yeah. I thought you might have been going Les Dawson with the Ada character and pushing your pushing your imaginary breast up with your arm. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just you. I'm going to get Sam to do one where I'm going to get her to turn her gain down a bit. I want you to do angry, like Mrs.、Oh. Angry. Oh my god! If that's okay. Oh, I love angry. I think. Oh, I'm thinking it might work better with Ant Script Script Two. Ant Script. Because I don't think I've heard you do that. No, well, it's not my natural habitat. No, no, indeed, no,、Anger. indeed. Okay, I'll turn my game down、All、right now. <laughs> Imagination is. No, that's wrong. I don't <laughs> like that. Imagination is priceless. Doesn't matter if there was no money to buy a ball; he'd make one out of socks and paper. He was born and raised in the heights of Garagoa. Are you listening to me? In the heart of Colombia. Yeah, money was scarce, but love, oh, love was abundant, and he was a happy child. Yeah, he got his first job when he was eight, helping his old man out with his small business, and it was fun times with his dad. Well, somehow. He could tell he was forging his character, getting ready for the future. College was hard, but it was worth it. He got a dream job that let him travel the world and become an expert in data engineering. When he makes a suggestion, listen to me because we always listen. When we say yes, he will implement faster than anyone. He is part of Exceed. And we will try and keep him as close as possible. 
Oh, well done. That uh, that was just it was ant. That was simmering anger at, uh, at times. It yeah. boiled over, but but the rest of the time, the simmering anger was palpable. Almost. I've got to tell you, I did squat on the floor and and sort of hide away a bit. Um, <laughs> I thought that that I don't want to see that side of Sam again, please. No, it's not good, is it? it well, no, it was good. It was definitely good. It's just you don't want to be on the receiving end. It was even more angry than I thought you would do. Really? Oh. <laughs> but I think that that. Peaking thing, that's 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 more natural anger. Because yes, it's I very agree. easy to yep. do a scene and, and build to a crescendo. But actually, yep. you know, sometimes you just start losing and, and then you mm. catch yourself and mm. bring it back, you know, all that stuff. So I know I thought that was that was really good and quite scary and um I'm sorry. You, n- you never want to hear that again, do you? <laughs> no, no, no. Nope, nope, please, no, yeah, please don't be angry with the no, sound. Please don't be angry. Well, if you want to play along in the privacy of your own booth, of course, be as angry as you like, frankly. We've put the scripts in the show notes so you can have a try yourself. Oh, we went up a bit there, didn't we, Donna? <laughs> if you've got any voiceover questions that you'd like answers to, you can send your question for future episodes to podcast at britishvoiceover.co.uk. Good question this week. Good question. Do you have a voiceover genre you've never tackled? And if so, why not? Animation is what I'd love to do and I've never oh. done. Um, well, like I, cartoon I, animation? Um, yes, Yes, um, and and the reason I'd love to do that is obviously it's it's lots of fun. It's silly. It's different to all the usual stuff. Um, draws on different parts of your your brain and your voice, mm-hmm. but it's a uh, it's also a terrifying prospect when you don't do that sort of thing usually. And I say this advisedly because I I'm going on an animation workshop this week. Oh, nice! Are you? Which nice. I'm terrified about because of course I've not done that, and suddenly you've got to stand up in front of a bunch of people, many of whom may do it you know, have, have had yes. a number of paid jobs in that in that field. You know, people sort of think it's, it's kind of silly voices, but it's not. They've got to be grounded in, in a reality, reality. In reality, to, yeah. yeah. To actually make them work. And often against type. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you, you sort of, your first instinct may, f- to bring that, you know, toaster to life, mm. m- <laughs> may not, whatever you're doing, m- may not be... Just because it's your first instinct doesn't necessarily mean it's the right instinct. Sam, have you got a genre that you've not done and a reason why? Well, funny enough. No, yeah, I've done most, but what I've never done, I've never done in-store stuff. Okay. Mm. And I'd love to do in-store stuff. I'd love to do more of that. (laughs) Would you? Yeah, Yeah, I've never been asked to do it. And there are times where I have been in a store and heard somebody I know. Yeah, oh, me too. Mm, me too, yeah. Whatever. And and I always feel a little warm glow for, for because um, <laughs> I, I, the, the last yep. person I think I heard was Sarah Starling, yes. who um, was in M&S. She, she's a voice in, uh, well, one of the voices very they use in, for M&S, in, in M&S, isn't it? Isn't it? She's, and I suddenly thought, I suddenly perked up and thought, oh, yes, I, I, think <laughs> I do want to buy one of those. <laughs> oh, Sarah, you're selling it to me. And I just thought, what a lovely thing to be you know uh, in in a store where you know you're you're sort of um you know you're you're sort of persuading people to part with their hard-earned cash well, something else unexpectedly. i see what you mean sam yes, I, thought absolutely. Be, I thought it could be quite fun <laughs> but I've, I've never done it so uh i have i have no idea i did a few ads for co-op and that was quite and also right. nisa when you you go to the like the petrol station oh, and it's yeah. like oh, nisa. Yeah. that's quite funny when you find yourself in the petrol station and you, and you hear yourself hearing pop up, yourself but it's, yeah. it's, that's always quite funny yeah. um I've got one, but Sam, you won't be surprised at this because we've talked about it before. I've never done an audio book and I don't want to. (gasps) Good decision. Um, Just because, as we've discussed before, I like long form. I like e-learning, but e-learning long form pays the bills. Whereas, um, and I know, hmm. I know you, I know you think Sam that is very merciful. Well, no, no, actually, well, obviously, I do. (laughs) Yes, as you know, but if they paid. It's basically what you're saying is if they pay good if money, if they you pay do the it, same rate it. as an e-learning uh, thing, if they pay by the way, yeah, of course I would. Oh, of course, that's interesting. It's, and that's the reason I haven't done it because it doesn't. So it is, it is purely a budgetary thing from your point of view. Yeah, for the so amount of work that goes into it, and I, do you know? I, I once again, I take my hat off to audiobook narrators. Um, mm. How that it's a labour of love more than money. I think. I agree. I agree. Yes. I've done one long audiobook. Um, I did a, a, a short children's one, um, and that was three years ago, just at the start of lockdown, and it was before I had a proper, proper booth. Mm. And my neighbour got furloughed, and he's got a he's got a quad bike. 
Oh, um, nightmare. He, yeah, he, he nightmare. revs more than rides. Oh. Um, so I've got I, a neighbour like that too. Annoying, isn't great, it? Are they? Yeah. Not no, no, great, no, not great. A heavy-duty motorcycle, just like a helicopter going over, can mm. cut through even the best booth in the world. Well, thank you so much, Anthony, for yes, thank you. joining us Pleasure. on uh, How Do You Say That. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Oh, no, it's an absolute pleasure. And all of uh, Ant's details can be found in the show notes. Indeed, they will be there. We'll also be putting today's scripts in the show notes so that you can have a read for yourself. And yes, do send over any voiceover questions to us at podcast at britishvoiceover.co.uk. Please like and subscribe the podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you do subscribe, our witterings will magically appear in your feed every Friday. Woohoo! Now, Ant, if you've listened, and I know you have listened, oh, uh, yeah, so yeah. this is the bit where we He'll do it know. all together. He'll know. He knows. He doesn't mean he's going to do it right, but yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go, you see. So, thanks once again to Ant Hewson, and we will be back next week with more scripts and another voiceover guest when we will be asking... <gasps> How, How do you say, say that? that? Okay. How do you say that? that?